let me show you how we can use Lightroom's masking tool to target the midtones of an image and improve the overall contrast this way. As always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's jump into it. If you're just here for the mid-tones mask, make sure to check the chapters of the video to quickly navigate to this exact spot because I will be going through the whole editing process from start to finish. And to start things, we are going to merge the HDI image first. So I'm going to select these five images down below, right click on them, go to Photo Merge and choose HDR. And we're doing this because we are dealing with a very contrast rich scene with lots of highlights and deep shadows. So here we have the HDR preview. We don't need to change anything. Just hit the merge button and we will end up with this image. So as always, before heading into the masking adjustments, we want to get the base image right. That means we want to adjust the exposure, getting details out of the shadows and the highlights. And we are going to do that in the basic tab. First off, let us adjust the white balance. I want this image to feel a little bit warmer. So I'm going to bring up the temperature slightly introducing some more golden hour light to this scene. I'm actually raising it quite a bit right around here looks quite good to me. We can always adjust it later on if we see it doesn't work. So right away you can see the sky is pretty much blown out and we don't have any details in here. What I want to do to fix that is to first bring down the exposure quite a bit just around here where we can start seeing some details in the clouds up there. Reducing the overall exposure will also make the darker areas darker. So to fix that, we can bring up the shadows and we do have a good amount of room here to play with since we're working with an HDR file. So let's raise the shadows right up to this point. Here we can again start seeing details in the darker areas. Looking at this program, you can see there's a little bit of underexposure going on right there in the foreground. It's not that big of a deal, but we can still try to fix it by bringing up the blacks. This also makes the whole image softer since we are reducing the contrast. And if you have been watching some of my videos, you know I really love this soft look for my landscape shots. Okay. Now to add back a bit of contrast, what we can do is to increase the whites and you can also see on the histogram, we do have a little bit of room to play with in the brighter areas. So we can safely bring up the whites without overexposing the image too dramatically. So let's say right about here looks great. Now let me also introduce some texture, which will make the image sharper. I'm also going to bring up the clarity to add some punch to it. And I'm also going to drop the DAs very slightly to further work on the soft look. And then and let's bring up the vibrance because of course we want this image to be saturated. Okay, this is looking much better. Let's take a look at before we're quick and you can see color wise, we do have a much warmer looking image. Exposure wise, it's also looking slightly better, especially in the sky where we do have a lot more detail around the clouds and the dark areas have improved as well. Now we want to target areas locally because different areas of the image need different adjustments to them to make them look good. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. And again, if you're here for the midtones mask, make sure to check the chapters because the midtones mask will be applied at the end of the masking process. First, we want to get all the other masking out of the way before working on the midtones. So I want to start by using a linear gradient covering the bottom half of the image like this. And what I want to do in here is to bring up the whites because this area can use some more brightness. Always pay close attention to the histogram if we adjust the brightness like that. And I'm also going to bring up the exposure for even more brightness. Let's go even higher here. That looks great. And I do think I want to add a bit of clarity. This will just gives the foreground more punch. And I love adding clarity on scenes with reflections like this because it looks so good. Let's bring it up to around 14. I also obviously want to work on the sky. Therefore, I'm going to create a color range mask and I try to target some of these blue color tones up here. So let's click somewhere around here. As you can see, this will select way more than needed. So I'm going to bring down the refine slider and hopefully we can nicely mask out these clouds. 
just like this. Of course, we still have more selected than needed. So we want to subtract and we want to choose a linear gradient and just bring it up like this. So only the top part of the sky will be affected. And what we want to do here is to, of course, bring down the exposure. I'm going to drop it quite a lot here. I also want to bring up the contrast just to make the clouds pop a little more. And I'm going to bring down the temperature, introducing some more blue tint to the very top of the sky. All right, that looks awesome. Then let's use another color range mask. And with this color range mask, I want to target the green highlights in the center like that. I don't think we need to adjust the refine slider. This selection looks pretty good. And I'm going to bring up the exposure. And what we're doing here is we're basically dodging the green highlights, making them even brighter. And by doing this, we're adding more contrast to this image in areas where it makes sense. For even more brightness, we can bring up the whites very slightly and we can bring up the temperature, introducing some more golden light on these green highlights. And let's maybe bring up the saturation just a bit and let's see if we can even add a bit of clarity. And this will really help to make those green highlights pop. So be very careful to not overdo it, but this looks great. Okay, then let's use a radial gradient covering the center like this. And I want to change these darker areas in here. So I, I again just want to bring up the exposure a little bit, getting out a little more detail from those shadows. And then what we can do as well is to use another linear gradient for the water in the foreground. I'm stopping right at the edge of the bottle right here. And I'm also going to subtract a linear gradient coming up from the bottom because I only want to target the distant water. And what I want to do with that is to bring down the temperature, giving the water more of a cold bluish color tone. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation to make the color more visible. Wonderful. Then we can add a bit of glow coming in from the right side using a radial gradient like this. I'm going to rotate it to fit the shape of the mountain and I'm making sure to overlap these mountains in the back. Now to add this glow effect, I'm simply going to bring up the blacks. We're going to be very careful here to not make it too obvious. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze. All right, that looks awesome. Then let's use an object selection mask and I'm going to make sure the rectangle select mode is activated. Now let's draw a rectangle around that tree stump in the foreground. You can see Lightroom is great at selecting objects like this. Now I want to make it a little less contrast rich, I would say. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to bring down the clarity and I do want to bring up the exposure just a bit. Perfect. All right. And at this point, we're pretty much done with all the masking adjustments, except that midtones range mask. First, I want to show you the difference from before, after just a bunch of basic adjustments to after with a bit of masking applied. As always, masking plays a huge role in editing images like this. Now we can fine tune the contrast using a midtones range mask. And that's really, really simple to do. What we want to do for that is to create a new mask and we're going to choose a luminance range mask since we want to target a very specific luminance range. Of course, we need to set it up. And therefore, we are going to use this slider right here, which has a few points we can control. First, for a midtones range mask, we want to filter out the darkest shadows and the brightest highlights. And for this, we're going to use these handles right here. If I pull this further to the right, we are telling Lightroom to cut out all the blacks that are darker than these tones. The same goes for the highlights slider on the right side. If you bring it down slightly, we will tell Lightroom to filter out the brightest highlights of the image. At this point, you're not able to spot that much on the overlay, maybe right around here where a Lightroom is filtering out some parts of the clouds and maybe right down here at the deepest shadows. 
but we can adjust this luminance range mask some more because we have two more handles to adjust and these are right here at the moment we do have a hard edge between the darkest blacks which we have filtered out and anything else now if you use this handle and bring it down to the right we are making the transition from the darkest blacks to the midtones way softer and you can also see that on the overlay so i want to bring it down quite a bit almost to the middle of this bar and i'm going to do the same for the highlights to make the edge between the brightest highlights and the midtones softer as well so click on that handle and bring it down and see how especially the sky is changing in the overlay preview again i want to bring it down quite a bit almost to the center of the bar and what we have here is a very smooth mask to target the midtones of our image without affecting whites and blacks. So let me deactivate the overlay for a second. What we want to do with this luminance range mask now is we want to add contrast. And how do we add contrast? That's really simple. We are making the brighter areas brighter and the darker areas darker. So we can do this by increasing the highlights first. Then let's bring down the shadows. And I do want to bring up the whites a bit. And if we want, we can also bring down the blacks for more contrast. It's very, very important to keep these adjustments for a midtones range mask very, very subtle. Otherwise, it becomes visible quite fast. Also, the setup for the luminance range is highly dependent on your image. Sometimes you want to have this center part a little wider and sometimes you want to narrow it down. If you're using the luminance range mask like this on one of your images and it doesn't look right, don't worry. You just have to play around a little bit with the luminance range mask until it looks good. And maybe dial down the adjustments you did to the highlights and shadows. This helps as well. Now what we can do as well with this luminance range mask is to add a little bit of clarity just to give the midtones a bit more punch. All right. And now let me show you the difference from before to after. This is a very, very subtle but powerful change. It's highly visible in the foreground and it's also quite visible in the forest in the back. So I'm really, really happy with how this has turned out and that's basically the tutorial part of this video. Now we want to finish the editing with a little bit of color grading. So let's head out of the masking adjustments and we want to open up the color mixer here. Let's bring up the green saturation a bit. I'm also going to bring up the aqua saturation for the water in the foreground. And let's bring up the blue tones slightly. Wonderful. Then I also want to add a little bit of split toning through the color grading panel. I mainly want to target the highlights because I want to add some more golden light to them. So let's set up the hue in that way. Going with a warm color tone right around, around 40. And I'm going to bring up the saturation a little bit. All right, that looks wonderful. Then let's go down into the calibration tab. Here we can just bring up the saturation of all these sliders a little bit to push the color some more. Okay. Then we can sharpen the image in the details tab. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking by holding down the Alt key so we can see where the sharpening is applied. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. All right. Now I do think I want to apply some transformation on this image because I have a feeling it looks a bit weird at the moment. So what I want to do is I want to make use of the vertical slider, just bring bringing it down slightly. This will make the mountains appear to be a little bigger. And I also want to make use of the horizontal slider to kind of straighten the image because it's kind of leaning towards the left side, which I don't like. But that's looking great. Of course, we need to crop the image now. So let's do that real quick. All right. And finally, we have a few sensor spots here. So let's also clean that up. I'm going to click on the remove tool here with the heel mode active. I'm going to click on visualize spots. And here we have a few visible sensor spots. So that should do the job. Perfect. 
I also think I want to clean up the image. So while we're in the remove tool, let's click on the remove mode. And we are going to use generative AI to clean up a few things. So I'm going to get rid of this thing, this rock right here. And let's see if we can get rid of the big rock in the right bottom corner. Let's see what Lightroom will do. All right, and that's the finished image. So I hope this mid-tones masking tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have anything to add or have any open questions, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.